What's good, y'all? It's your boy Ross back at again with another video. So we're gonna check out 10 wrestlers forced to improvise on the fly. Sometimes in wrestling, you gotta improvise. Something happens, injury happens, or a spot wasn't, you know, planned or whatever, and you gotta compensate for it. Or maybe you're running low on time and you gotta go to a commercial break or the show about the answer. So you gotta speed up the process, you gotta speed up the spots and stuff like that. It's just it's wrestling. That's what makes it such a difficult task to be able to do it live because you gotta pretty much be precise and you know sometimes things happen so we're gonna check out some of these moments where wrestlers had to improvise on the fly shout out to wrestling flashback great great content creator dope uh wrestling videos um definitely go check them out been subscribed for quite some time link to the original video will be down below Let's check this bad boy out One, two, is this song, song? The live nature of wrestling sometimes requires wrestlers to deviate from the original plan. This usually happens because of an injury, a botch, or due to mm -hmm. something unexpected yep. happening. Vince we'll look at examples squads. of all three today as we list 10 wrestlers who improvised following unexpected moments. First, we'll look at how a referee saved the day after a bad injury. This occurred mm -hmm. during the second night of WrestleMania 39, where The Miz took on a surprise opponent who was revealed by Snoop Dogg to be a returning Shane McMahon. Almost immediately, Shane landed badly after a leapfrog. Oh, yep. He tore his quad right Shane there. Shane O'Mac had torn his quad and was in no shape Boy. to continue, leading to the referee Jessica Carr. Some called, were saying it was knee related. Some were saying quad. I'm not sure. And Snoop exactly. Dogg into the ring. From there, Snoop was told by a cameraman to punch out Miz. <laughs> With the ref then telling Snoop to hit the people's elbow. <laughs> Oh, Snoop wow. hit the move to a great reaction before That's going crazy. for the pin to win the match. While the people's elbow he hit may have been questionable, yeah. Snoop Dogg did a great job stepping in and entertaining. What's crazy is Snoop Dogg's championship belt, in my opinion, looks better than the ones we have on, on the main roster. It does, bro. That, that shit look cool. <laughs> I ain't gonna lie to you. In the crowd. And credit to the referee for showing fantastic improvisation that ultimately saved the segment. <laughs> People Next, we'll look at wild. a case where someone that wasn't in the match improvised after an injury to one of their friends. The match in question saw Chris Benoit and Eddie Guerrero team with the NWO to take on RVD, Booker T, Goldust, Bubba, and Spike Dudley in a 10-man tag match. At one point, Kevin Ash ran across the ring only to collapse oh. to the mat, tearing his quad as a result. This was ironic Jeez. given what he said earlier in the night. I've been medically clear and what oh. i really want is a little physical contact the rest of the competitors began brawling in the ring while earl hebner oh, threw up the x, the x. bubba ray stood around nash to make sure no one went near him since kev was badly hurt it felt like a shotgun it's yeah, so bubba comes over he's like stay where you're at and then he just like, kind of lays Working down to make line. sure I mean, just make sure there's no, like, nobody hits me. Shawn Michaels, who'd been on the outside for all of the match, got in the ring and began directing traffic, telling mm -hmm. Big Show to distract the referee while HBK hit Booker with a super kick. Mm -hmm. Show then made the cover before Michaels reminded him to hit the choke Sam to finish the match, mm -hmm. giving the NWO the victory. The wrestlers responded well following the injury. Nah, they didn't is, miss a beat as they moved to a later. That's, that's what you call professionalism at its finest. I'm pretty sure maybe some people knew, but there's so much chaos going on, you're not realizing... You know what I'm saying? That's what you call professionalism. At its finest, bro. A spot in the match straight away. Meanwhile, there was great initiative shown from Bubba Dudley, who protected Nash in the corner, while Shawn Michaels improvised by hitting Booker with the super kick and telling Show to end things with the choke slam. Bubba nah, Ray Dudley good. showed more good improvisation in our next example by making the most of a botch caused by someone outside the ring. This went down on the Raw after WrestleMania 32 mm -hmm. in a bout that saw the Dudley boys wrestle the Usos in a tables match. The Dudleys were heels at the time, so instead of the get the tables spot, they told the crowd to screw themselves. <laughs> The finish came when the Usos each missed their signature splash, sending them both through the tables mm. below. However, the timekeeper rang the bell too early, leading people to believe the match was over. But a tables match can only end when someone has put their opponent through a table mm -hmm. with an offensive maneuver, which is exactly what Devon did to Jimmy Uso to officially win the match. <laughs> Bubba Ray saw the botch as the perfect opportunity to heal it up as he mm. hilariously berated the timekeeper for ringing the bell That's too good. early. Bubba used the botch to his advantage, ensuring things turned out even better than they would have had the bell ringer not jumped the gun. Now you ring the bell! Now we won! It's uh, extremely rare for wrestlers to not know the finish to their match by the time the bell rings. However, this problem arose at the Taboo Tuesday 2004 pay-per-view where Chris Jericho... Damn, y'all remember Taboo Tuesday where you could quote-unquote choose the match and stipulation man that 
Crazy time. Jericho <laughs> was set to defend his Intercontinental title against an opponent voted on by the fans who had 15 wrestlers to choose from. This was the first WWE fan interactive pay-per-view of mm -hmm. its kind, so not all the potential scenarios were accounted for. This included Shelton Benjamin being chosen as Jericho's opponent, as the WWE believed Batista was going to win the vote. After winning the poll, Shelton immediately came out. Neither he nor Jericho were given any instruction until they were both wow. in the ring. This meant everything they did was improvised, including the finish, where Benjamin won following a T-bone suplex. As revealed in his second book, Jericho didn't That's even know crazy. what Shelton's finisher was. So he just jumped into the air and let Benjamin do the rest. Going into that match, I knew nothing. Had that wow. match on the fly. Didn't know I was winning until Jericho didn't kick out. What? <laughs> That's crazy! <laughs> he didn't even know. He got chose. He didn't know. He's like, bro, when the nigga didn't kick out, I knew I won. That's <laughs> Benjamin winning proved to be the right decision as it mm. showed the fans that their vote counted and could even lead to a new champion being crowned. And that's that's actually smart booking. It's it's very dangerous, but Sheldon Benjamin not knowing because they were probably expecting Batista and it'll be Sheldon. And I'm guessing maybe Jericho already knew whoever got picked was going to win the match regardless, but he didn't tell him. And that's crazy it can't it, it gives off that real vibe like oh shit i actually won this like that's pretty cool and it gives the fans at the time oh shit our votes actually matter it can decide who could be the champion you want you want to be able to give now you want people to check in to a specific pay-per-view because oh you can choose bro we a lot of people chose and he ended up winning like it's the voting marketing. remained legit for all future fan interactive events however the wwe implemented ways to better control the outcome such as by giving people fewer options to choose from uh, and by planning out matches based on each possible scenario uh, our next example was supposed to be a routine squash match wait, as lex luger fought six wwe say? implemented ways to lead to a new champion being crowned the voting remained legit for all future fan interactive okay, events the however the wwe implemented legit. ways to better control the outcome such is by giving people fewer options to choose from and by planning out matches based on each possible scenario. Our next example was supposed to be a routine squash match as Lex Luger fought 6'10", 400 pound wrestler named Roadblock on an episode of WCW Nitro from late 1996. <laughs> Lex was to finish the match. I'm sorry, that's just a funny name. He comes out there with the Roadblock sign. My name is Roadblock. <laughs> with his torture rack submission, but he failed to get his opponent up for the move. Luger had gotten big wrestlers up for the torture rack before, but Roadblock presented a unique challenge since he was both tall and wide. Luger signaled for a second torture rack, but he once again failed to execute the move. He oh. went to get me in the rack the first time and he couldn't get me up. He said, brother, what the hell? We can't do this. I said, nah, brother, we'll do it. I said to him in the, in the ring, let's do it again. I'll get up. Feeding off the energy of the crowd, Lex attempted the rack for the third time, finally proving successful. Luger submitted Roadblock to get the win as the fans went wild. He's got him! He's got him! He's got him! Wow. He's got him. I can't Luger would later state that this was the hardest torture rack he ever had to pull off. Lex could have easily given up and tried mm. something else, but he was able to use the audience to his advantage. It was great to see the fans' reaction build and build after each attempt, leading to an awesome moment once Lex eventually performed the maneuver. This next match also features a botch finisher, only with a far worse improvised outcome, as Mickey James defended the Divas title against Gail Kim on the August 2009 Raw. The match's time was cut before they went out. So by the time we were supposed to go out there, they cut it to like three minutes. Oh, Meaning the two girls had to quickly rush through all their spots. Things began to fall apart after Gail Kim landed hard on her face when she missed the crossbody. Oh. Mickey then went to hit her finisher, which ended up being botched due to Gail Kim still being out of it. Oh, Add to that the fact that wow. both women were tired following the fast-paced match. James then went to hit the mid kick but failed to make contact, oh, instead opting yeah. to throw a forearm. A yeah, you can tell she's not. She, once she landed on uh, her face, she's not there. She's not visibly there really visibly upset mickey waited a bit before going for the cover making for an awkward final few moments then after winning the match mickey barely celebrated the victory her face yeah. said it all there was no hiding her frustration over the botched ending james was reportedly chewed out backstage following Damn. the match the higher-ups weren't pleased with how she handled the botch they didn't like the improvised forearm finish or yeah. the way mickey reacted on camera as we've yeah. seen already an injury has the potential to derail a match that's why it's usually best to end the bout straight away rather mm -hmm. than risking further damage Eugene learned this the hard way when he and William Regal defended the World Tag Team titles against Christian and Tyson Tomko at New Year's Revolution 2005. Following a hot tag, Eugene stopped the top rope attack from Christian, but in doing so, Eugene appeared to partially tear his patella tendon. He then fully mm. tore his patella after oh attempting a drop God. kick. Eugene tried to keep going, but was unable wow. to stand. Tried to do a drop kick, and it was just like, 
I don't know if I partially tore it and then completely tore it, but it, regardless, it just blew, blew out and I couldn't walk, I couldn't stand. Oh Resulting in Christian telling his partner Tomko to work on Regal, giving Eugene the opportunity to perform a roll up wow. from behind to get the win. Eugene was out of action for six months as a result Ooh. of the injury. Hardcore Holly is no stranger to wrestling following an injury. And one of Jeez. the most famous examples of this occurred during a match on SmackDown Ugh. in June of 2000 against Kurt Angle. Holly suggested Kurt hit a moonsault since Angle would usually go for it in oh But gosh. Kurt had never successfully hit the move on anyone before. So he was unsure if he could do it. Holly insisted, but once it came time to perform the maneuver, Holly was too far out to make contact. Angle failed to get enough distance as his oh, legs came no. down on Hardcore's right arm, breaking oh. it in the process. Oh, Kurt tried gosh. to immediately end the match, first by going for the cover, only for Holly to kick out, and then by going for the Olympic slam. However, Hardcore would counter. Despite his arm nearly hanging off, Holly continued to oh, call spots. Gosh. So I was talking to Bob. And he wanted to lead the match because he had a broken arm and he was limited. The two men eventually improvised the finish where Angle gave Bob a low blow, followed by an Olympic slam for the three. So wow. far, we've looked at how the That's likes of injuries and crazy. bodies have required improvisation. But now we'll look at what happens when the ring malfunctions. This Wrestling happened at No Mercy 2000. Out there with a broken arm still. Bruh, you gotta love the business to do that. And two, during Chris Jericho and Christian's world tag title defense versus Booker T and Goldust. During the match, Jericho went to springboard off the ropes. Oh, However, oh. the middle turnbuckle snapped clean off. The wrestlers continued as normal with Jericho hitting Goldust with a bulldog onto the title belt. However, given the situation with the broken second rope, Chris was unable to perform the lion salt, which yeah. was the intended finish of the match. Y2J instead scaled the broken ropes to do a moon salt, wow. which gave him and Christian the win. Jericho has to be commended uh, for how well he handled what could have Good improvisation, bro. Like good thinking on your feet. Well, I can't do the line salt, so I gotta do this. You know, that's that's good ring awareness knowing what to do. Being a match killing botch, as he still gave us a cool finish despite the tough circumstances. <sighs> Lastly, we'll look at how improvising when they weren't supposed to can get a wrestler in trouble. This happened during the height of WWE scripted promo era, where Triple H and Stephanie McMahon would cut long promos At and the force their authority and sometimes even scold wrestlers. The same formula was set to be repeated on the September 30th episode of Raw in 2013, as Hunter and Stephanie came to the ring to call out the Rhodes family, who they'd been feuding with at the time. Mm -hmm. All three Rhodes were insulted before Dusty got in Triple H's face while at the same time putting his hand in front of Stephanie who quickly swiped Rose's arm away. Stephanie was legitimately angry after this incident as it was the second time Dusty had gone off script during a segment with her. As two weeks prior, Dusty had gotten in Stephanie's face not allowing her to talk to him like she had done to so many wrestlers before and would continue to do in the future. You need to no, listen no, to this. Don't Excuse me. me. This you is need a good segment. Don't me. This was, Following these two segments, was Dusty was segment. rarely given a speaking role on TV again due yeah. to his off-the-cuff promos that went against the company's policy of scripting dialogue word for word. Dusty's natural old-school approach was a breath uh, of fresh air compared to was, the more formulaic style we'd be used to this. seeing from WWE at the time. And that brings us oh, to the end man, of this video. I remember As always, that. if you enjoyed the video, Watching be sure to that, give it a like. And that, that was so good to see because at that point, the authority was running rampant. Stephanie was running rampant. And she was always just disrespecting everybody. So it was cool to see someone going off script like Dusty. Because he's old school. He, like, he had bullet points. He didn't need no script. So it was cool to see that. Him like, nah, don't you interrupt. Like, that was cool. That should have been something. The little, you know what I'm saying? The hand to the face. Who are you talking to? Don't talk to me like that. That is what makes wrestling great. That's what make wrestling back then so believable because it didn't come off as scripted. It came off as someone's really feeling the way they feel and they're saying the things they say because they believe it. Rest in peace, Dusty, man. That was an interesting feud. I remember watching that promo segment. I thought it was dope. Now I understand why they didn't really want him talking afterwards, man. But hey, Comment down below. Let me know some other improvised situations you've seen in WWE where, you know, somebody got hurt or they had to switch up something. You know the behind the scenes on what happened and why it was improvised. If it wasn't in this video, once again, subscribe to Wrestling Flashback if you haven't already. Link to the original video will be down below in the description. But I appreciate all the love and support you guys shown on channel Road to 150K. And I am still the undisputed YouTube wrestling champ of the world. Appreciate y'all kicking me. See y'all next one. Peace.